Uh, this is the last video that we need before we can finally get into solving sides of right triangles. Uh, how do we solve equations with square roots? And how do we use square roots to solve equations? So, again, kind of similar stuff we've been talking about in these last few videos here. Uh, ask ourselves, what's the opposite of a square, meaning the power of 2? If I have something to the power of 2, that's called a square. Uh, what's the opposite of that? What's the opposite operation? It's actually a square root. Um, so this radical symbol right here is a square root, and that is the opposite of a square. These two operations are opposites, just like dividing and multiplying are opposite operations, adding and subtracting are opposite operations. Uh, squares, or powers of two, are opposite operations of radicals or square roots here. The opposite of a square root is a square. And it's kind of confusing when talking about squares and square roots since they have the same word here. Um, a root, a square root, and a square are two different things. So the square is the power of two, um, and the square root is the radical. Alright, they are opposites, try and remember that. That's how we can undo those operations. Um, so in order to solve equations with radicals, it's always nice to get that variable by itself first. Um, in our case for today, we're going to be getting x squared by itself. So we want to undo all other things around it and get it all the way down so that x squared is the only thing on one side of the equation. Once we have that, then square root both sides. Okay. So in order to undo that square, that power of 2, and just get x, we're going to square root both sides. So let's try a simple example here. If I have x squared equals 36, well I've already gotten x squared by itself. That's already set up. So let's square root both sides. If I square root a square, that all goes away and I'm left with x, which is what I want. And if I know what the square root of 36 is, it's just 6, then I have solved my equation. Now later on in math you'll find out that um, square roots of numbers, if they're perfect squares, are going to be a positive and a negative value. Um, so just keep that in mind for later purposes. For our purposes right now, since we're going to be solving for lengths of triangles, we're only going to be dealing with positive values. So the square root of 36 for our purpose is just positive 6. Let's do another example here. Let's get a little more complicated with our equation. Uh, it's supposed to be a 2 there. 2 squared plus x squared equals 4 squared. Okay, so we want to solve everything first, or simplify, and then solve, sorry. So 2 squared is 4. And 4 squared is 16, 4 times 4. So we still haven't gotten x by itself yet. But if we subtract 4 from both sides, getting rid of that positive 4, then what's left is x squared on the left side, and 16 minus 4 is 12 on the right side. And now if we square root both sides to get rid of that square, then we're left with x equals the square root of 12. And we got to simplify that, so factor it down. That's the same as 4 times 3. And we take the square root of 4 out. And so we got 2 on the front, and we still have radical 3. Or 2 times the square root of 3 is our final answer. Okay, let's do another example. Slightly more complicated still. Occasionally you may get a side of a triangle that is 3 times the square root of 2, or something similar to that. So that's why we practiced simplifying just this little expression here on, um, what was it, two videos ago, because um, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this later on. So what do we do? We distribute that exponent to both of these terms here. 
Uh, so 3 squared is 9, and the square root of 2 squared is just 2, so we got 9 times 2 right there, which ends up being 18, right? Let's drop everything else down. We got x squared in front of 18, and it equals 9 squared, which is 81, 9 times 9. So if we get x squared by itself, we would have to subtract 18. And we get x squared by itself on the left side. That's what we want. 81 minus 18. Well, if you subtract here, you get 63. So x squared equals 63. Now that we have x squared by itself, we square root both sides to get x. And we get the square root of 63. If you factor that down, hopefully you know that's the same as 9 times 7. And we take the square root of 9 out. So we get 3 on the front and radical 7 left over. So our final answer is 3 times the square root of 7. All right, so let's keep practicing. It's more of the same, really. Again, we want x squared by itself. Simplify anything else we need to. In this case, we've got to simplify these exponents first. So 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and add these up. 9 plus 16 is 25. So 25 equals x squared. Now we got x squared by itself. Everything else is simplified, so let's square root both sides. And we get x equals square root of 25 is 5. Um, one thing you might run into um, is that you see something like this and you say, well, I could just undo all these squares by square rooting everything. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. And if I just square root everything, then I get rid of all my, my squares. Now, if you're thinking that, stop, because that's not true. If we were to do that, we would get 3 plus 4 equals x, and we would get 7 is x. Well, we said that x was 5, not 7. So this is really not a, um, a property of radicals. We can't do this. Um, there's no sum property of radicals. I can't break this up into the square root of 3 squared plus the square root of 4 squared and then simplify. It just doesn't work. There's no property for sum of radicals. There's only quotients and products so do not do this simplify everything first and then square root both sides all right so on to another example again simplify first so we got x squared plus 9 that's 3 squared 4 squared is 16 let's get x squared by itself let's undo that addition by 9 by subtracting by 9 that leaves us with x squared equals 16 minus 9, which is 7. And then if we square root both sides, now that we got x squared by itself, then we get x is the square root of 7. And that ends up just being a decimal. I don't want decimal form. I want radical form, so I'm going to leave it like that. It's my final answer. Let's do one more. Again, we're going to see this example here. If we're squaring something that looks like this, we've got to distribute this little exponent each of these numbers here. So we get 5 squared, which is 25, and the square root of 2 squared, which is just 2. So that simplifies to 25 times 2, which is 50. So we get 50 on the right side. 5 squared is 25, and we got x squared. Ooh, whoa. Let's try that again. x squared plus 25 equals 50. So to get x squared by itself, subtract 25 x squared equals 25, and by now hopefully you know what the square root of 25 is, so if we square root both sides we get x equals 5. That's our final answer. All right. So this is really leading us into um, solving for missing sides of right triangles using what's called the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, and the Pythagorean Theorem looks a lot like what these examples are looking like here. So that's why we had to learn all of our radical math multiplying, solving, dividing, all so we can do this trick called the Pythagorean Theorem. 
and that will be our next video. So I'll see you there.